Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about a topic that I have not talked about in some time, and that would be counterfeit cards. Now, counterfeit cards um, have always existed. Uh, back in the day when magic cards were not expensive and we had collector's edition, now that of course sounds incredibly silly given how expensive a collector's edition Black Lotus is today, but people would used to, very crudely by the way, not even like with any skill set, because again, a Black Lotus is $20, $40, $50, um, and the collector's edition Black Lotus is almost no money. You're buying the whole collector's edition, I think for $40, $50, and it includes Power 9, all the dual lands. Uh, they would do something called a reback, which is they split the card in two, the collector's edition in two. Uh, the gold edition is now removed. They paste a new card, and then they use a filing, a nail filer to make sure that the edges look about right. And then uh, they would make at most maybe a $20 profit from doing something like that. It's crazy. Which sounds, cr I mean, it sounds insane now. Like who would possibly do that today given that value of it and how often they would go wrong. And plus you would need that very special blue glue. If you used any other glue, the light test would prove, that's how most cards were found out as rebacked is the light test that no light goes through because they use a different type of glue. Now, um, let's uh, briefly speak about uh, eBay. Uh, eBay is a mess of a place, as is TCG Player. Although TCG Player has better protection because you know they understand Magic cards more. I mean, they only sell cards, so not just Magic cards. Pokemon cards are being faked. So I don't want to just limit this discussion to Pokemon cards only. Um, that would be unfair. Or Magic cards only, that would be very unfair. I mean, there are so many things that are being faked right now in um, the sports industry. Uh, in the sports industry, let me tell you what used to happen is uh, people used to um, cut fake patches. Like a game used memo memorabilia patch used to be very, and still very expensive. And they would take, they would buy the real, jer uh, a copy of the jersey online. And then they would put a better patch, like maybe a logo. And then they would put it in a real card and remove um, the the patch that wasn't, maybe it was a one color, very lame white patch, but now it looks amazing because they put a new one in. And this continued for a long time. So in every single collectible game, it doesn't matter what you collect, there's people who, I think, if you watch Pawn Stars, stars uh, that uh, the PSA grader, Steve, that they always have on, a learner later turned out he was a fraud uh, and he was making like fake autographs or whatever he was doing. And he was PSA. So let me read you this. Uh, and then uh, Steve. Um, PSA. So let me read you. And this guy worked at PSA, for instance. He worked at Beckett. And he was on the store a lot. Um, he, he was probably the most famous Steve Gra grade. After spending about 15 years with the company, Steve, Steve Grad, Grad, Grade, G-R-A-D, has left PSA DNA, the company's principal authenticator. Grade made a name for himself, appearing regularly on Pawn Stars to help Rick Harris. I've been incredibly blessed uh, to have worked with some of the most talented and incredibly gifted people in the industry. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's it. Now, it doesn't say... Why? Um, let me let me find out uh, what happened to him. There's Looper. I'm not going to make you guys uh, look at Looper. Uh, I I thought he got caught from something. Counterfeit warning. Fake Kobe Bryant memorabilia. Look at Don Tits faking it. Scammers. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I mean, I every single comment on the uh, YouTube was him faking it. So how these guys became so-called experts? I think their overall work is pretty good. However, how did he learn his trait? Um, I have no opinion of him. Here he is on Pawn Stars, and he's yeah. I mean. 
what happened? Like, why did he leave? I don't know. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure something bad happened. Scammers exploit uh, Kobe Bryant's death. So anyway, so the sports industry, ever since Babe Ruth, anything of value will be counterfeited. It doesn't matter what it is. Is it an autograph? Is it a photo? Is it... Um, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Anything that can be faked will be faked to be resold at a higher profit margin. And people are not, um, they're not going to care uh, because money is money. And if this is a little kid, he's not going to know better. And the access to counterfeits have, has always been there. There has always been, um, th there has always been this. And there always will be this. So any collectible hobby, be it a card game, be it anime figures. Um, I've been sold anime figures that were fake. Um, and they're clearly fake and I've been ripped off too. So it's not like, um, even if you are an expert and even if you know everything, maybe you're not an expert in every single thing. So I was not, when I was first collecting anime figures and that was my first collection I bought, I was not an expert in fake anime figures, which were clearly fake. Um, I couldn't tell the difference between a price figure and a regular figure, but as you grow older, as you collect, build, and build, and build, then you get better and better. And now it's super obvious if someone's trying to sell a fake figure to my store. And it, just like for Magic cards, I can't really explain it to you. You just know it's fake. Like if you've been playing Magic and you hold your head and you feel those cards all the time and you take them out and you look at them all the time and you look at the artwork, it doesn't... It doesn't take very much to identify something is fishy. And if something is fishy, then just uh, no, look at it, right? Just take a look at it and then be like, why is this fake? So, very interesting. Uh, very interesting scenario. And I think when it comes down to it, hey, uh, we'll see what the future holds, but definitely it's not going to be less fake magic cards. I'll put it that way for you. There will only be more and more fake magic cards. And as magic gets more and more expensive, there will be more desire to do this. Um, because why not? I mean, there's always been easy money. People always want easy money. People always want easy, easy, easy money. And they're going to, uh, they're going to uh, find any way to do it for any hobby. They're going to fake autographs, fake memorabilia, fake uh, sports cards, fake magic cards, fake Pokemon cards, fake PSA cards. I mean, anything and everything, fake anime figures, fake Legos. There's fake Legos, for goodness sake. No, I'm not even kidding you. There are fake Legos. This is actually an industry where people fake these very expensive uh, Lego boxes. And, you know, it, it's pretty interesting. I mean, people have fake degrees in Magic the Gathering. Okay, okay, actually, no, I take that back. The most interesting fake thing that I've seen from Magic the Gathering isn't a card. It's actually the dude who had that fake degree that in psychology. And he was actually like using his fake degree. The problem was like he was training Magic players and then someone called him out on it. And it turned out he didn't have like a dissertation paper. He didn't have a PhD. I forget what that dude's name was. But I made a video about it. That's probably the piece of paper that was faked most often, Magic the Gathering. It's not the Magic cards, but the fake degrees. I mean, let me put it this way. If someone's going to fake a degree on LinkedIn and on social media and stuff and pretend to be a fake psychologist just so he can get involved in Magic eSports, <laughs> faking a card is like, you know, I mean, it's duh, right? It's going to happen. So I don't sell online. I don't recommend buying online either. Um, buy from, or if you do buy online, buy from a reputable source. It's all about, 
in the future, it'll be people you trust and people you don't trust. I'm not going to trust a random stranger to buy my cards online because obviously the Nazi well, could be a random stranger who bought my cards online. And But also if I was a buyer, and I'm a buyer right now, I wouldn't buy unless I could see the card first. Hi, guys.